Okay, in question seven, we have these two masses connected by a light string. I like to start with free body diagrams of anything that we talk about. So the free body diagram for this looks like this. Tension acting up, M2G acting down. For the other one, it is tension acting to the right, Fn acting up, Fg acting down. It says frictionless surface and frictionless pulley, so there's no friction. What is the rate then of the mass? Think of each one separately. What is going to cause the first mass, M1, to accelerate? That's the net force. F net on mass 1 is M1 times A. What causes it to speed up? Tension. What causes it to slow down? Nothing, because there's no force of friction. In the case of the second one, F net on mass 2, M2A, what causes it to speed up? M2G. What causes it to slow down? The tension. That's a good way of thinking about it. Think about what causes it to speed up, what causes it to slow down, and plug the formula in. Then we have two equations here. M1A equals tension, M2A equals M2G minus tension. I want to combine these two into a single equation. Replacing M1 and M2 with a large M to remind me that that's a combined mass of the system. When I add, I eliminate the tension. I simply get MA is equal to M2G. Then if I want to know what the acceleration is, it is M2G divided by M, the mass of the system. M2 is 8. G is 9.8. The mass of the entire system is 20 kilos. From this, I get a total acceleration of 3.92 meters per second squared. They both accelerate at the same rate, so it's appropriate to talk about the 12 kilogram mass accelerating at 3.92 and the 8 kilogram mass accelerating at the same rate. It may seem obvious, but it's important that you realize that because based on that calculation we can then figure out what the tension is in the string by returning to the fact that we know that M1A is equal to the tension. So tension is mass 1, 12 times 3.92. From this we get 47 newtons of tension in that string. And the tension's the same everywhere as well.